It's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered, And in last week's episode, I answered another frequently asked question from our readers. And the question in last week's episode was, the ICU wants to remove my wife's tracheostomy and they want to transfer her to LTAC. Will that be a safe option for her? You can check out last week's question by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another frequently asked question from our readers. And the question this week is, can a tracheostomy or a trach be reversed? Many mechanically ventilated patients in intensive care are in an induced coma and they require a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube to facilitate such mechanical ventilation during their critical illness. The goal should always be to wean mechanical ventilation get a critically ill patient out of the induced coma and get them extubated. And extubation means the removal of the breathing tube or endotracheal tube so that they can breathe spontaneously and unaided so that they can leave intensive care. If for whatever reason weaning of mechanical ventilation and the breathing tube or endotracheal tube fails, a tracheostomy can be considered as a next step. So when is the right time and right situation to do a tracheostomy? I'm really glad you've asked because here are some articles and videos that will give you all the knowledge you need if your loved one should have a tracheostomy or not. So the articles you may want to have a look at is articles and videos, I should say. How long can a breathing tube or endotracheal tube stay in? You can also look at how long should a patient be on a ventilator before having a tracheostomy and what are the risks and benefits of a tracheostomy and also why would a critically ill patient in an induced coma need a tracheostomy in intensive care. So you can go and have a look at those articles and video by scrolling down below this video and you can find those links in the written version of this blog. And if you are watching this on YouTube, Click on the link below this video that will get you to our website where you have access to those articles and videos. So once a tracheostomy has been done, your loved one can hopefully take the first steps to wean off ventilation. Once the ventilator has been weaned, then the next step is to remove the tracheostomy. Here is a word of warning for our readers and viewers in the United States who have a loved one in intensive care. Often, a tracheostomy is being used as a conduit or vehicle to get your loved one out of intensive care as quickly as possible and move them to LTAC, which is known as long-term acute care. Let me be very blunt here. If your loved one was to leave intensive care on a ventilator with tracheostomy, it could be the death sentence for your loved one, especially in LTAC. We have families approach us every day, literally begging us to help them get their loved one out of LTAC back to ICU. Why? Because the only safe place for a ventilated patient with tracheostomy is either ICU or intensive care at home. LTAC simply don't have the skills or expertise to wean patients off ventilation and tracheostomy. We have some case studies how we help some of our clients to stay in intensive care instead of going to LTAC or long-term acute care after having a tracheostomy. So again, I'll put a link to a case study below this video. Next, how does ventilation then get weaned when having a tracheostomy? I'm really glad you asked, because here are some articles and videos, again, that will explain it for you. For example, how to wean off ventilation and tracheostomy step by step, and tracheostomy and weaning off the ventilator in intensive care, how long can it take? Again, I put some links towards those articles and videos below this video in the written version of this blog. 
in most cases, a tracheostomy is temporary, providing an alternative breathing route until other medical issues are resolved. If your loved one needs to remain connected to a ventilator indefinitely, a tracheostomy is often the best permanent solution. The intensive care team will help you determine when it's appropriate to remove the tracheostomy tube. The tracheostomy hole in the neck, also known as the tracheotomy, may heal or shut on its own, or it can be closed surgically. In order to have the tracheostomy removed, which is also known as decannulation, your loved one needs to be off the ventilator completely and can breathe via a trachea mask, trachea hood, trachea collar or trachea shield. And then it's time to assess if your loved one can have the tracheostomy removed. Certain criteria need to be met for tracheostomy decannulation, such as a good strong cough or gag needs to be present in order to protect the airway. A swallow reflex needs to be present as well so that your loved one is not aspirating. Your loved one needs to be able to obey simple commands, especially if they're not non-neurologically compromised. An adequate cough and ability to clear secretion, secretions effectively and independently. Cardiovascular and hemodynamic stability need to be present as well. No new lung in infiltrates on an x-ray or on a chest x-ray. Also, with the tracheostomy tube, the cuff deflation needs to be tolerated for more than 24 hours. And your loved one should be able to tolerate a speaking valve for 12 hours or for more, usually during the daytime. Or sometimes a decannulation cap can also be used for up to four hours if airflow is present on finger occlusion. In patients following head and neck surgery, the decannulation cap may be left for longer periods at the discretion of the surgeon. I really hope this answers all of your questions. Also, as a quick tip, if your loved one is stuck in intensive care or LTAC, God forbid, or even at home with ventilation, tracheostomy, or even without ventilation, but with tracheostomy, have a look at, at a service or at services like intensive care at home. Intensive care at home is providing a specialist home care service, sending highly skilled intensive care nurses in the home to keep your loved one at home safely with ventilation and tracheostomy as a genuine alternative to a long-term stay in intensive care. Go and have a look at intensivecareathome.com. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? How can you make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You will get to that all important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you will learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you will learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care 
and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You will get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You will get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind-the-scenes insights so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also have a look at our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Also, have a look at our membership site, intensivecaresupport.org, for families of critically ill patients in intensive care. You can also call me, find international phone numbers on the top of the website. Also, have a look at our ebook section, where you get more ebooks, videos, and audio recordings, and you can also get one on one consulting and advocacy with me over the phone via Skype and via email by clicking on the re relevant tabs on the top of the website. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.